Welcome back to another exhilarating hair-raising episode of DNN, the lean, mean news report team that brings you the latest information direct from the school grounds. We'll begin today's episode with an update of some of the recent events happening around the school. Thank you, Mitchell. On Friday, August 28th, the college held its annual expo night where the Creative Arts, TAS Technology and Music Departments at our school got to shine with their outstanding senior major works and performances. This night boasted the hard work and dedication of many students sitting before you as they strive to make their hard work a success. Let's take a closer look. Friday the 28th of August saw the success of the annual HSC Showcase Exhibition Night where the works of students of all year groups, particularly the HSC major work of those in year 12, were displayed in the gallery come concert that took place in the park. Owing to the fantastic promotional campaign run by Mrs. Greco and Miss Wood, the night attracted masses who were welcomed to the sound of amazing musical performances, mouth-watering canapes by the hospitality boys, and the stunning art, timber, and What a busy week it was for not only the expo night taking place, but book week occurred with numerous activities around the school, from homeroom trivia to the inaugural book week gauntlet, which went up as a huge crowd pleaser. There was some intense competition going on, especially with Mr. Trevelyan and Mr. Yunus going head to head. In fact, a royal investigation has been set up to determine if Mr. Yunus resorted to desperate and illegal tactics in tackling Mr. Trevelyan to seize the $30 gift card. Regardless, the week's events went off quite well, and a big thanks to Mrs. Copeland and Mrs. Taylor of the Literacy Department. 
We now bring to you an inside look at the creative world of visual arts. Our highly specialised camera team takes you to Mrs Greco under recent fire from our college principal, Mr Logue. Let's take a look. Don't you say action or okay. no, I'm, sorry, I'm, not, I'm just making... Hi, Miss. Thanks for for meeting with us. It's um, good. I've just been going through all the over the budgets for all the KLAs, and I just noticed that there's been a lot of money spent in the visual arts area. And I was Correct. just just wondering, what have you been spending the money on? Well, we needed three hundred dollars per sheet because there's some beautiful Egyptian paper that we've been using for some Year Twelve artworks. There's about $100 worth of mauve paint and that's 100 mils and it, it's very, very tiny and we, it doesn't go very far. I'm uh, talking about the ones that says thousands of dollars. Oh, so, well we Not need... Not the paint and the pencils. Uh, well, that's the um, printing machine that we needed to buy okay. um, to enable photography to happen and as you know, photography paper is very expensive right. and then we need Adobe Photoshop to go with those oh, programs right. okay. and also to the um, some of the painting <laughs> yeah. the pencils okay. and yeah, the, the oil paints and then the turts yeah. and then the methylated spirits right. that we're using okay. to wash it That's up good. and then we have paper and stone hair. Oh. Yeah. Finger painting, like what? Where's all that money? We need Miss, to be accountable for that. Mr. Lowe, we do more than finger painting oh. in the art department. That's we have year eight making sculptures, so that it's such an academic, rigorous subject. Are those There's cakes? Some... Oh, and the, and the wonderful ceramic cakes that Year 7 made. Oh. And Year 11 and 12, the academic rigour in visual arts that is required by these students for the HSC is, is amazing. It's good to hear. We have Year 9 painting skateboard decks. We have, they're also making beautiful ceramic Greek pottery. So what are you making? I'm making a Greek vase pot made out of clay. And what were the processes involved in making um, this? Before we had... I got to make this part we had to do a base out of like a paper circle and then we had coils and you build it up out and then back in so what are the influences um well we had to research about all the different types of Greek vases there were and you'd choose one you design or you choose the one you want and then you'd have to like draw it in your book and then you'd go off that so how are you planning on finishing the pot? Um, it's going to come out to a wave and then along like this part here it's going to be like my heritage tribal design along it. So I have no so idea they're... where you got finger painting from oh. or the fact that they may even push paint around or even... I, I think you really need to come down to see what happens down I, there. Well I will, I will. <laughs> Thank you for the invite. <laughs> We're back here at DNN HQ. Coming up next, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Anthony Boot with the Sports Report. After washouts against St. Mary's Cathedral in the Kemba in rounds one and two, the under-14s and junior opens began their seasons against Marrickville. Both teams rolled over their opponents, with the under-14s winning 64-1 and the junior opens prevailing 41-6. In round four, it was Reesby vs. Punchbowl, with both sides facing the ultimate challenge, Chris Brady's umpiring skills. The under-14s battled hard and eventually prevailed 9-7, whilst the junior opens, thanks to outstanding performances from Zach Caddy, Sam Smith and Chris Lunzis, the boys got the win 25-16. 
In round five, it was back to Olds Park against rivals Penthurst. For the under-14s, a goal in the final 10 seconds from Nathan Bashara helped the Reesby boys tie the game at 31-31. For the junior Opians, a superb defensive effort from all the players helped the team run over Penthurst, eventually winning 38-15. After a Byron round six, Reesby faced a tough Rosebank side. In the under-14s, a slow start didn't help their chances of winning, even though the boys gained momentum after a big play from Anthony Sucker. The boys went down 62-28. It was different for the junior opens, a neck and neck game all the way until the boys caught fire in the fourth, thanks to some big hits from Trey Stafford Barry, final score 47-22. Both teams have made the finals and both look to bring the trophy back to Reesby. After a washout in round one, the senior futsal team kicked off their season against Cathedral. The boys looked superb in the first half, leading 4-1 at the break, but St. Mary's came out a totally different team in the second half and cost Reesby the win, Reesby eventually going down 7-6. In round three, the boys didn't look themselves from the first whistle, and as a result were caught up behind the eight ball. Up against a talented Rosebank squad, the boys could never seem to get it going, eventually lose, losing 16-3. In round five, it was Reesby versus Marrickville. The boys looked back to their normal selves and piled on the goals from the get-go. The boys prevailed 16 to four against a depleted Casimir College. In the final round of the season, the Futsal boys had a tough encounter with Punchbowl. Reesby scored late to bring the score to 5-4, but couldn't get another goal to tie the game and eventually came away with the loss. Until then, the man himself, Anthony Boone. Well, it's been quite an evening. I don't know about you, Mitchell, but I believe there is never a boring moment here. I totally agree with you there, Peter, but I'm afraid that's about all we have time for tonight. I'm Peter Silk. And I'm Mitchell Seymour. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed another episode of Dan and... This is Capital TV. Legacy. What does it mean? To create a new culture. An identity. A spirit which binds our community together. It shapes our history and the foundations of a new future. To new endeavors, the final frontier this is legacy.